Now, of course, much of the media attention has focused on football because it has that special life place in our national life. And recognising its significance, I set two challenges for football's return. First, that a reasonable number of remaining Premier League games would be broadcast free to air. And second, that the financial benefits of returning would be shared throughout the entire football family. So I'm glad to confirm today that a third of matches to finish the season will now be free to view, including the Liverpool versus Everton derby, and live Premier League football will be on the BBC for the first time in its history. This is an open invitation for all fans to be part of this significant moment in our sporting history. And it also, of course, has the really serious public health benefit of encouraging people to watch at home, which will be essential. Now, getting top leagues back up and running will also release much needed funding to support clubs lower down, many of whom are cornerstones of their local communities. And with both of these benefits, I can now make it official. Football is coming back. Of course, these headline sporting events are only one part of the story. And I really am keenly aware that even as we reopen some domestic competitive fixtures, not all events will be back on. And given the deserved momentum that had built up behind women's sport after football, cricket and netball World Cups, I will be working hard with the sports minister to make sure we don't lose any of that progress. Visibility matters, and our daughters deserve to see, football, uh, to see female athletes on the main stage. Now, our focus is also on how we can get grassroots sports back up and running safely so that people can reunite with their local teammates. Now, while those teams can't compete together yet, today I'm glad to confirm that we are also relaxing the rules on exercise further so that from Monday, people will be able to exercise with up to five others from different households, crucially, so long as they remain two metres apart. That means that people who play team sports can train together and do things like conditioning and fitness sessions that don't involve physical contact. It's another vital and important step in the right direction. Now, we've all become a nation of early morning walkers, wicks, workouters, and evening park runners. And many of us have discovered how valuable and therapeutic physical activity can be. And I hope that we'll continue to make time for it, even as life returns to normal. We still have a way to go, but for a sporting loving nation, today really is a significant milestone. We won't be sitting in the stands for a while, and things will be very different to what we're used to. But live sports will be back on our screens next week. The British sporting recovery has begun.